Kendra and the staff veterinarian here at the Houston Zoo. Today we are celebrating World Sea Turtle Day. We're wrapping up World Sea Turtle Week. And we are so excited to share with you a couple of sea turtle rechecks, um, some exams that we're doing on some of our rehabilitation patients. And we're going to get started with that right now. Let's go ahead. Um, this was one of the New England turtles that came to Cape Cod, was stranded as part of a really large cold stunning event, and in fact, they were so overwhelmed in New England that they asked for help from lots and lots of different organizations and people, and a number of sea turtles were sent here. This is the last one we have from that group that is still been healing. Um, so this animal is going to get a blood draw right now. Basically, the last thing that we have want to check off our list before it can get released is that it needs to um, have a bit of a bit better blood cell count. It's been really anemic over time, and um, we're seeing it improve, but we just like it to be a little bit better. Um, we think it might have been anemic due to some parasites, and it was dewormed, and it's been getting a lot better since then. All right, so Jessica, our technician, has gotten that blood sample. And I'm going to go ahead and take a look at our sea turtle right now as well, and just make sure that everything's OK. But as I said, it's been getting so much better. It's been getting stronger. It's almost doubled in size since it came in. Um, and we really haven't had any concerns with it recently. But we're just going to take a quick look at everything and make sure everything still checks out OK. Everything looks good there. As you can see, as these turtles stay with us for even longer, very strong and that is exactly what we want to see in a sea turtle. Um, so just checking to make sure that all the skin looks good, the shell looks in good condition, and that this animal's in good body condition as well and has been eating well. And I've got no concerns with that. So we're going to go ahead and send the blood out to the lab, put the sea turtle off to the side, and get started with the next turtle. especially in a big turtle like this. It's what was called a blind stick. Um, so basically that means that Jessica can't actually see the vein before she puts her needle in, but she's done this a ton of times, so as you can see, she's doing a really, really great job getting that blood sample. All right, great. So next we're gonna be getting the sea turtle set up for x-rays. Um, this is a big turtle, so not all of it fits in one picture. And we're gonna be getting several views. So this is gonna take just a little bit of, of time um, to take all of these, and we're gonna to have to step out of the room um, so that we don't get any additional radiation exposure that we do not need. All right, so we're just peering through the the window here and we're taking a look at this turtle getting set up for, for x-rays. As you can tell, this turtle's feeling really, really great um, because it's trying to move around quite a lot. So 
Um, Andy, who's one of our sea turtle keepers, and Jessica are going to try and get it positioned as best as possible for an x-ray. Um, and then they're going to run away really quick to take that image so they don't get any radiation exposure and then uh, move on to the next image and go on from there. If you happen to find a sea turtle on the beach in the wild um, that looks like it's injured or in distress, um, there is a, a phone number that you can call. It's 1-866-TURTLE-5. Um, and that number will get you routed to the people that you need to talk to. Um, if you're in this part of the world, you might end up talking to Andy um, so that we can end up seeing these turtles and get them fixed up and back into the wild. All right, so <laughs> as you can see, sea turtle is very full of life and <laughs> moving around quite a bit. Um, do we have any questions yet that have come up? All right, so um, as I mentioned, uh, we have a couple of different species of sea turtles that we're looking at. Um, in fact, the loggerhead sea turtle that you saw first, we didn't even realize it was a loggerhead at first. We thought it was a hybrid turtle with another species um, because it doesn't exactly match up with any particular pattern that we would normally see in any species. Um, you look at the scoop patterns, which are those patterns on their back, um, to tell what species they are usually, and it didn't quite match up with any of them. So we ended up sending out blood testing for genetics and then found out that it actually is a loggerhead and not a hybrid. So that was a very interesting finding for us. Um, and this guy is a Kemp's Ridley sea turtle, again, um, state turtle, and we're just really excited to be able to work with them. How many species of turtle do, sea turtle do we care for? Um, we generally see up to four species usually. Uh, we see the Kemp's Ridley sea turtles, we see the loggerheads, we see quite a lot of green sea turtles, and occasionally hawksbills. Those are the ones that normally come through our rehabilitation. All right, it looks like we've got one picture, um, and they're moving on to the next one. What do they eat in the wild? Um, it depends a little bit on the species. So the loggerhead that you saw first, it loves to eat jellyfish. This is one of the reasons why you should use, um, to make sure you don't leave plastic bags on the beach. Plastic bags look a lot like jellyfish, and they're gonna eat those and possibly get hurt, and, um, and then unfortunately probably end up in our care. Um, some of the other species, like a green sea turtle, they're actually herbivorous, so they're gonna be eating more of the plant life in the ocean. So, depends a little bit by species. What is their lifespan is the next question. Um, that's a really great question. I don't know their exact lifespan, but I know it is very, very long. Um, they can live quite a long time. Um, and Andy might be able to answer that a little bit better. All right, let's go ahead and go back in for a quick second and just take a look at the x-rays that they've taken so far. turtle because it's so big. Um, this is the, the turtle's spine. You can see the turtle shell going around here. You can see a little bit of the turtle's flipper way up in the corner. Um, and one of the things we're looking at is this turtle's lungs. Um, we want lungs to be nice and black, uh, which it looks like actually this is an improvement from last time. I see a lot more black, which indicates air, um, in these lungs. So I'm really happy with what we're seeing there. All right, it looks like they're getting ready to take the next image, so we're going to go ahead and pass that off. Okay. All
All right, so there's a question about how we treat um, animals with shell fractures. If it's similar to like human bone fractures, does it take a lot of time? And the answer is yes, it takes a lot of time. Um, so there's a lot of things we can do depending on what kind of fractures we see. This animal actually has a fracture that we've just been keeping an eye on. It's been mostly keeping in place um, and the animal's on pain medication and just needs a ton and ton of time. Um, we keep it clean. Um, there's also things you can do to stabilize a fracture, um, similar to a splint or something that you would do with a human bone um, that you could do with a turtle and allow that to heal over time. I always say the turtles do everything slowly, so however long a human bone is gonna take to heal, imagine it so much longer with a turtle. And in fact, the, the first animal that we saw, the loggerhead, we talked about how he, we need it to be a little bit less anemic, and it's been here since December. That's a tremendous amount of time. That's because Red blood cells in turtles are actually really, really different than red blood cells in humans. In humans, our red blood cells last about 100 days. In turtles, they last about 700 days. So that means that they don't turn them over as much and it takes them so much longer to make new ones. So if I want his red blood cell count to be higher, I just need to wait so much more time. How do we track those that come into our care? So sometimes we're able to do this and sometimes we're not able to. As I mentioned, we partner with the Gulf Center for Sea Turtles uh, Research out of Texas A&M and they're able to tag some of the turtles that are released. Not all of them, unfortunately, um, but some of them we are able to track and see where they go. And it's really interesting to see the paths that they take. Now we mentioned earlier some things about um, how you should Make sure you're not leaving your plastic bags on the beach, but in fact, you can uh, use reusable bags and try and reduce your single-use plastics use. That's one of the best ways to help save sea turtles is reducing those single-use plastics and just not leaving trash on the beach. Also, if you are fishing on the piers, uh, there are lots of receptacles for recycling fishing lines, so that's a really great thing as well. We unfortunately see a lot of sea turtles that get entangled with fishing line. Um, and sometimes I'll have to amputate a flipper because it's so, so severe. So if you just recycle that fishing line, don't leave it on the beach uh, for the sea turtles get, to get entangled in, um, then that makes my job a whole lot easier. All right. Um, as you can see, that they're taking quite a lot of different views of the sea turtle in terms of the different x-rays that they're taking. Um, this is so we can see different parts of the animal's body, different parts of the shell. Um, there's three main views that we take for sea turtles. One's called a dorsal ventral, basically taking from top to bottom. One's called a craniocaudal that they're working on right now, taking from nose to tail. And then one's a lateral, basically taking from side to side. Um, so each of those tell us something different. All right, so next question is, do we care for aquatic turtles and tortoises? In terms of the rehabilitation that we do, uh, we just see the sea turtles here, but in terms of the animals under our care here at the Houston Zoo, we see all sorts of different turtles and tortoises. We have um, tremendous numbers of species here. You can see the Galapagos tortoises out on the exhibit. In fact, we have the Galapagos exhibit coming up um, that is being built right now that is going to feature some of those amazing species. All right, it looks like we are almost done with radiographs, <laughs> but just uh, taking a couple of more. As I said, this is a very large turtle, so it takes a long time to get, to get every bit of it in the picture, and especially when it is so vigorous and so full of life, um, it takes just a little bit longer. for today. We're going to continue taking these radiographs and taking a look at this turtle and making sure that it's um, continuing on a progressive note in terms of its care here. Um, so thanks everybody for tuning in. Please join us um, next Wednesday at 11 a.m. for the next Facebook Live. And again, um, just think about things that you can do, little things to help save sea turtles in the wild, reducing those single-use plastics, and um, not leaving trash on the beach, recycling your fishing line, those kinds of things. Um, thank you so much, and we really appreciate it, and happy World Sea Turtle Day.